Hello, this is Dr. Harriet Fraud with Capitalism Hits Home. Today, I want to talk about some psychological mechanisms that work not only with individual personal psychology, but also work with national psychology. And the ba- the first one I'm going to talk about is dissociation. Then I'll talk about denial. And then I'll talk about projection. Dissociation is the ability to take your mind away from the realization of what's happening if what's happening is too painful for you to bear. It's dissociation is a skill which we all have to learn in childhood. Children can't survive knowing that the people on whom their entire lives depend are indifferent to them or so distracted by their own lives they can't really pay attention to their children or see their children as kind of walk-ons in the parent's own psychodrama and can't really try to understand where they're coming from or see their children as people to manage rather than to get to know. Anyone can be a parent, anyone who gets himself or herself biologically pregnant can be a parent whether they have any affinity for children, whether they're at all capable of the 24-hour care of an utterly vulnerable life. And so children learn mechanisms to protect themselves. And one of them is dissociation, which is the ability not to see something that's happening. Now, what you see that's happening can leave a trace in your unconscious mind, a trace which might then lead you to realize later what was happening at the time the event happened that you or the events happened, or the relationship happened that you didn't want to confront because you really couldn't survive understanding it. But dissociation is removing your brain from encompassing what's happening. And as Aldous Huxley said, the brain is an adjusting valve on reality. So it's operating that adjusting valve so as not to know what's happening. Now, Leonard Cohen, the wonderful singer, wrote a song that is both, has both personal and also political aspects that has to do with dissociation. So he's talking about what's going on in the U.S., but also what's going on on a personal level. And it's called Everybody Knows. The lyrics are, everybody knows the dice are loaded. Everybody rolls with their fingers crossed. Everybody knows the war is over. Everybody knows the good guys lost. Everybody knows the fight was fixed. The poor stay poor. The rich get rich. That's how it goes. Everybody knows. Everybody knows the boat is leaking. Everybody knows the captain lied. Everybody has this broken feeling like their father or their dog just died. And he's talking about dissociation, that feeling that you know but you don't want to know so you decide you won't know. It's a disconnection that happens unconsciously. And it's a skill that we have to learn in childhood. And it helps us survive through childhood. And it actually endangers our survival when we don't understand what's happening later in our lives and decide to just turn it off. You can see it, you know, on a personal level, I remember it being very dramatically illustrated in a client who had come in for generalized anxiety 
And one day when she walked in, I told her she had a caterpillar in her hair because at that time these gypsy moth caterpillars were hanging by threads from the trees where they hatched and were dropping on people, which wouldn't have been a big deal. I expected her to just take the caterpillar out of her hair. But instead she jumped up, she screamed, she shook herself violently, and I got up and took the caterpillar from her hair. As we worked on that feeling of terror and we did hypnosis on that feeling, it turned out that she identified the caterpillar with her uncle's fingers who caressed her and then went on to sexually violate her when she was a little girl. This was a beloved uncle who took care of her regularly when her parents were working and who the whole family adored. And she couldn't face that the adored chosen caretaker of her family was a sexual predator. And so she transferred that creepy feeling onto insects and freaked out when she had a caterpillar in her hair. The caterpillar was just the trace of the knowledge of what had happened to her. The same thing happens when a veteran hears a car backfire and suddenly takes cover and screams because he's repressed his terror in order to stay in battle. But the backfiring of a car stimulates his terror and he runs and takes cover. His brain, his regulating valve on reality, knew that he couldn't have time and space to freak out and cry and show his fear in battle. And that's the reason that one out of three veterans from Vietnam, Iraq, and I don't know the figures from Iraq, Afghanistan, but it's probably the same, that one out of three commit suicide when they get home because of the terrors and fears and anguish that they feel that they had to repress in order to continue in battle. Those things were dissociated. And that leads us to the next psychological mechanism that I'm going to talk about, which is denial, where people deny what's happening and interpret it differently or attribute it to something else. That client of mine who attributed her utter terror to a caterpillar was projecting onto that caterpillar the feeling she had denied that really belonged to her uncle as a predator and her family for abandoning her to this predator and for instructing them all to love this predator. These are the feelings that children had, those 40,000 orphans in Ireland who testified that they were abused by priests, beaten, sadistically and sexually assaulted, sexually used by the Holy Fathers who were holy and therefore whose predations couldn't be acknowledged. They denied that. And it went elsewhere in their lives to either to suicide, the 40,000 were those who survived enough to testify and wanted to testify. But they were so traumatized that they denied what was happening. The next thing I'm going to talk about is projection. My client with the caterpillar projected her feelings of terror from her uncle, who was the trusted caretaker who her family all wanted her to adore, onto bugs, and in this case, a caterpillar. The children abused by those 40,000 who can 
talked about being abused by the priests in Ireland, projected their feelings onto their own badness, that they somehow were contemptible people, and therefore many of them committed suicide, many in addition to 40, the, the 40,000 that testified, and denied what was happening because it was too scary and because they had been taught that the Holy Fathers were direct communicators with God and that anyone who criticized them was a sinner. So they projected it often onto themselves as bad sinners that were somehow intrinsically evil and didn't remember what happened to them and at whose hands. And they denied it until it suddenly, in the year 2000, it was exposed in Boston, in the United States, and that spread throughout the world where people remembered because of the examples of other people that they read about or heard about. And so their mind was able to acknowledge what had been denied and the events from which they had dissociated themselves. Projection is where you throw your feelings that are too disturbing to contain onto someone else or something else. In terms of projection, in the case of Donald Trump's followers, Donald Trump helps them project their deep sense of loss, their sense that they're surrounded by liars, that they are being given Fox News and the Wall Street Journal owned by Murdoch, or the Washington Post's news owned by Jeff Bezos, or the New York Times and the Boston Herald's news privately owned by large corporations, or the Post and the Wall Street Journal owned by Rupert Murdoch, that they know that the news is adjusted to fit the politics of the people who are the owners here, and that they are being lied to, and that it's fake news. And so when Trump says there's fake news, they believe him, and he uses their rage against being lied to and misled and misled that this is a real democracy when they're being cheated. They pro he helps them project that onto immigrants, onto black people or brown people or Native Americans, on to women who are uppity because they want to be treated as equals and through people who make atypical sexual choices, whether they're homosexuals or trans people, he projects their rage and hatred onto people different from them. And that allows people to express their sense of being cheated and lied to, but still support the basic capitalist politics that Trump arranges with his $1.7 trillion in tax write-offs, mainly to the biggest, richest businesses and people. But he uses the technique of projection, projecting real feelings onto fake causes, the way Hitler projected the Germans' real sense of loss onto Jews, homosexuals, gypsies, communists, and socialists. Projection is a very, very powerful mechanism. And uh, people who dissociate from what happened because they can't take it and who deny it to themselves and project it onto more safe victims, I would say, or at least projected causes, somewhere know the truth 
even though they deny it to themselves. And it comes out in bizarre ways. I had a client who was terribly tortured. He had 29 alternative personalities. And alternative personalities happen when the person, when the child is so tortured that she, he, they cannot take the burden of the pain. And so they become a different person who was tortured. And that person has a different identity. This client used to sometimes speak in German because his parents who tortured him and had others torture him were in a Nazi subculture cult. Or he talked in a Southern accent because some of the torture happened in the South at the hands of some of the Nazi cult members who were Southerners. And yet it emerged. It emerged whenever he tried to accomplish something and be in the limelight where he was asked to speak out, he broke down because the prohibition against knowing what he'd been through was too much. And he expressed a lot of love and loyalty to his parents who were severely implicated in his torture. And it wasn't until we started doing hypnosis to bring back what he'd been through that he was able to function and publish the brilliant work that he had done. And so when you dissociate from someone or something, there's a trace that's left behind. My client's terror at Caterpillars was the trace that was left behind from her uncle's molestation. Now, dissociation, denial, and projection also really happen in our personal lives and our political lives. So it's not just our political lives. We dissociate from the fact that America has lost the last four wars that we fought in. When it's mentioned, which I've mentioned when I've taught a class of university students, they don't know that we lost the war in Vietnam, even though the pictures on television were of troops being evacuated in a hurry by helicopters and taking off. And the United States had to leave. The same thing is true if I talk about Iraq or Afghanistan, where Americans had to leave. The armed for forces had to leave because we lost. In Korea, which I'm counting, it was a draw, but we hoped to conquer all of Korea for capitalism. And Korea was subdivided into North Korea and South Korea. So there was Korea, there was Vietnam, there was Afghanistan, and now there's the Ukraine, where we are fighting to the last Ukrainian but we are saying we are winning. We are plying people with arms. A casualty of war, the first one is always the truth. And most people know that the story that we're told by the press is not a complete story. Just like in Vietnam, we weren't told about how North Vietnamese were, people were tortured and how prisoners of war were shot in the head, and how our nepalming burned children's bodies as they ran naked through the streets in flames. And we hear about atrocities committed by the Russians, and no doubt some of them are true, but we don't hear about the other atrocities committed on Russian soldiers by Ukrainians. Everyone knows on some level, that there's atrocities on both sides. But a lot of Americans dissociate from the idea that they're being lied to. They don't allow their own brains to say, hold on, 
wait a minute. We know that the first casualty of war is the truth. We know we're being given only one side. What's the other side? How can we find it out? Sometimes there's an article or a speaker that allows the voice of truth to get through, through the dissociated and repressed feelings and knowledges that are dangerous. For example, black people have been routinely shot by police for a long time. Black people have been picked on for a long, long time. One of my earliest memories of injustice was being eight years old, going on the subway myself to my dance lessons and getting out at 59th Street and seeing a handcuffed black man on his knees with a ring of police surrounding him and beating him. And in my naivete, I started crying and I ran over there and said, stop. And they said, get out of here or you'll be next. And crying, I knew I better get out of there. Everyone knows that the police pick on black people. Everybody knows the police shoot people that are innocent. But we don't want to know that. So many of us don't. Many black people didn't want to admit it either. And it wasn't until the Black Lives Matter protests and until we watched a virtual lynching of George Floyd on video, video which a very brave 17-year-old girl filmed as Chauvin was kneeling on George Floyd's neck until he died. But the combination of seeing it on television and seeing Black Lives Matter protests brought home what we all knew. We all knew about this. We dissociated from that knowledge and we denied it. And we projected our outrage on other people. Everybody knows that crime at the upper levels goes unpunished. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that shoddy products are sold, that people have to fight against wage theft, which is very hard, that big companies try to deny their workers the break times they deserve or the eight-hour days that historically workers have fought for. Everybody knows that. But it takes a union, a strong union, to bring that up. And we dissociated from the knowledge of the injustices around us because they're painful. Just like it's painful that Americans have lost the last four wars at the same time as we just voted over $8 billion to a military that always loses and to military projects around the world. Everybody knows that doesn't make sense. Everybody knows that our enemies aren't about to invade us. I remember after 9-11, they had big, beefy, machine gun armed cops standing around Grand Central Station, supposedly guarding us from terrorist attacks. Meanwhile, you see people wheeling suitcases or trunks that could be full of bombs all around Grand Central Station. Who are we fooling? And yet, the idea was we should feel protected and that somehow the money for these people was justified when it really didn't make sense at all. Peace would have been a better way 
of keeping us safe than having militarily armed guards standing around to prevent bombs while people were wheeling suitcases around that could be full of bombs. But we don't want to know. And so we use our brain's capacity to dissociate from unpleasant knowledges. Not to know. It took Michael Moore's film, Fahrenheit 9-11, to expose that there, this was full of lies and an excuse for armaments, because we do have a big and profitable armaments industry, the biggest and most profitable in the world, and that it didn't make sense. But that's dissociation and denial and that we <clears throat> project our sense of being fooled onto other things because we don't want to know. Now, currently, there's really virulent examples. There's the example of the right wing, of Trumpism, and not only Trumpism, the Republicans all together, that take people's real outrage, real upset, and project it onto innocence, like immigrants, or people whose skin color is of darker hue, or women who stand up for their rights, or black Americans who stand up for black equal rights. On some level, his supporters know, now that's not really the problem here, but it's more convenient to blame those beneath you to suck up and kick down. And at the same time, they know that Trump said he'd get their jobs back, their manufacturing jobs, but of course he didn't. They know, because if they want to read the fine print, those American flags that they gave out at many of his rallies, said in small print, made in China, that Ivanka Trump's whole fashion line was made in China. Trump <laughs> brags that he didn't pay his taxes, and they think good for him. They don't realize that's why I have to pay more, because billionaires, like him, and multimillionaires can afford tax accountants that will find every loophole, can afford corporate lawyers that will get them out of paying taxes. And yet they believe in this man who doesn't deliver real services to them. At least Hitler gave to the Germans that were not on his hit list the lands he captured from other countries when he invaded them, and the property belonging to the people whose property he took, like Jews, gays, people with different sexual practices, socialists, communists, a lot of people. Trump doesn't even have to give anything. He just gives people a vent for their rage and a projected enemy. And that projected enemy are socialists, Marxists, people who stand up for their rights, whether black or Asian or white women and black women and Asian women and people claiming sexual freedom, of course they know they're not the enemy, but they dissociate and deny and project. And what we have to do is face the truth. We have to follow the AA principles, those steps, those 12 steps, and add a 13th step, looking at the social conditions that produced our willingness to lie to ourselves, to dissociate and deny and project. And we can, we can.
people are organizing against the kind of fascistic Trumpist logic, organizing into unions, organizing into Black Lives Matter, organizing into big protests, organizing into socialist organizations and climate extinction organizations. What we need now is to join all of those, to change these lies, to face where we've been and what we've done, to stop the dissociation and denial and projection, and be together making a better America. Thank you.